Now, in the axilla, uh, as you already discussed in the clavipectoral fascia, that uh, this was the clavipectoral fascia we saw and we saw the pectoralis major and minor muscle. And while discussing the clavipectoral fascia, we got an idea about that what are the structures forming the anterior wall of the axilla. Now, this again is a sagittal section here. It's a sagittal section from the axilla, guys. Just for your uh, uh, a quick recap, here this was the clavicle there. The muscle over there in front is the pectoralis major. The muscle here is pectoralis minor and you can see a subclavius muscle over there and you can see subclavius and pectoralis minor muscle both are enclosed in the clavipectoral fascia, right? So that is the anterior wall in there. Posterior wall, now this time we have to add to the posterior wall also. When you talk about the posterior wall of the axilla, that is about the posterior axillary fold. So obviously it will be regarding the muscles which are attached to the scapula. Posteriorly we got scapula here. So you can see that's a scapula. You can see the body of scapula here. A spine can also be seen. We can identify all the muscles in there, but let's go with the relevant one. So obviously the muscle which are present on the anterior surface of scapula, that is on the costal surface, toward the costal surface of scapula and below, will be forming the posterior wall of the axilla. We do not have to count every single muscle, the one which are present behind. That way you can keep going. We just have to look the immediate boundary of the axilla. See, anteriorly we see pectoralis major and minor, fine. Posteriorly, it is about this muscle which is on the anterior surface or the costal surface of scapula. And what muscle is that? I'm sure you know that is the subscapularis muscle. This big muscle over there is subscapularis. You go further below here, this muscle here is a section of teres major because minor is more posteriorly here. That is teres major muscle. And if you go further below here, this muscle in this is the section going through the latissimus dorsi muscle. The latissimus dorsi muscle which also is related to the inferior angle of the scapula. So, these are the muscles mainly on the posterior side forming the posterior wall. Axilla being a truncated cone-like structure, so we have an anterior wall, we got a posterior wall. We got a floor, floor is just by the skin and the fascia, that is, look at, see, that's a, that's a skin over there and the fascia which is forming the floor here. Okay. The question here is, what is forming the lateral wall and the medial wall? Because this section is not, not going to tell you the medial and lateral wall. So, guys, this being an axilla here, the medial wall is obviously toward the chest side here. So, medial wall is by what? It is by the upper ribs. So, you can see the upper four ribs over there and obviously their intercostal muscles and also the serratus anterior muscle which is present around them. Lateral wall, if I talk about, if I just bring my arm on the side, the lateral wall should be by the upper part of the medial surface of humerus. So, the things which are present on the medial side of the humerus are the one which are forming the, the medial wall, a uh, lateral wall. So, let's, let's draw this transverse section because you already have an idea about the sagittal section. You saw that sagittal section in the clavipectoral fascia also. So, I'm going to go directly to the transverse section and let's try to understand the boundaries of axilla in this before we go to the contents. <clears throat> so, when you take a transverse section, just even before drawing that section, keep it in mind that obviously toward the medial side will be rib cage, toward the lateral side will be humerus. Anteriorly, we just saw we have axillary fold, anterior axillary fold having pectoral muscle. And posteriorly, we have the muscle like subscapularis or the scapular muscles basically. So, keeping that in mind, if I draw this transverse section, like let's say this here is the rib cage. That obviously is toward the medial side. Then posteriorly, we got a scapula here. So let's say this is the scapula, the body of the scapula in there. Here we got the humerus and I'm drawing the humerus in such a way that I can see this lesser tubercle and the greater tubercle so that we can see a bicipital groove in between. That's a humerus, right? Okay. So even before we start marking these boundaries here, once again, let's go with the orientation thing that in this diagram, this in the transverse section, this is anterior, that's posterior, this is a medial side and that's a lateral side. That's medial toward the ribcage, laterally humerus, posteriorly you can see the scapula, anteriorly we'll draw the muscles. Okay. Anteriorly guys, we said anteriorly, we got a muscle, pectoralis major muscle. Now pectoralis major muscle is attached to the lateral lip of the bicipital groove. This is the pectoralis major muscle coming from the rib cage and then you can see it is attached to the lateral lip of bicipital groove and the muscle which is present behind is pectoralis major muscle i can do 
I cannot draw the pectoralis minor muscle all the way to the humerus because the insertion of pectoralis minor is to the coracoid process, which is obviously not to be seen in this section. The coracoid process will be higher. So we have taken a section slightly below. I can see only a part of pectoralis minor coming like this, but I cannot see the insertion part. For the pectoralis major, I can see the insertion part also because it is attached to the lateral lip of the bicipital groove here. So these are the two which are forming the anterior boundary of the axilla. This one and this one. The one anterior, the larger one, that obviously is the pectoralis major. And the one behind that is pectoralis minor. The two things which are mainly forming what wall? They are forming the anterior wall of the axilla. I will suggest you to keep writing these boundaries separately if you are making notes. Anterior boundary, pectoralis major and minor. <clears throat> Medially, we said upper few ribs will be there. They are intercostal muscles. And the main muscle that is serratus anterior muscle, which is like, we all know that serratus anterior muscle is taking origin from the upper eight ribs. We have eight digitation of the serratus anterior and they are all originating from the upper eight ribs. So you will see the serratus anterior muscle will be present in this manner. And I hope you know that serratus anterior muscle is inserted to the medial border of the scapula on the costal surface. See, all these small, small details will help you later to identify these the things in a transverse section or in the sectional anatomy. So this here is the serratus anterior. That is the serratus anterior muscle along with the ribcage obviously and that is forming what wall? That is forming the medial wall. That is mainly contributing to the medial wall. Posterior wall was by the subscapularis, latissimus dorsi. And TV is major, but obviously we cannot see all the three muscles in the same section because they are arranged one below uh, other. So the muscle that I'll see here is a subscapularis muscle, big muscle coming from, and then subscapularis muscle it goes and attaches to the lesser tubercle. That is medial to the bicipital groove somewhere. So this here, let's say, is the subscapularis muscle. The posterior wall is by this muscle that is subscapularis and just for the sake of completion let me write and also although cannot be seen in this picture and also by what and also by the teres major which will be below that we saw that in the earlier picture teres major and latissimus dorsi they are also contributing to the posterior wall but in the lower part but we mainly have to focus on the subscapularis in there subscapularis and they are all forming the posterior wall of the axilla. Now, this is, that's not difficult to understand the anterior wall, posterior wall, medial wall if you just have an orientation about how the section is taken. The only thing you have to understand here a bit is the lateral wall. Now, what about the lateral wall guys? What you see, lateral wall is very narrow. You can see the anterior and the posterior wall are converging and that's why the lateral wall is very narrow here. That's a very, very small lateral wall we have here. Now, what groove is that? That is a bicipital groove. Now, in the bicipital groove, in the bicipital groove, we have a long head of bicep brachii. So, the lateral wall is obviously by the humerus, why more precisely we should say bicipital groove, along with what? What tendon? Tendon of long head of bicep brachii. And he, from here, from this part, we also will have a coracobrachialis muscle going down. Coracobrachialis muscle originate from coracoid process. And then the coracobrachialis muscle goes on to the medial side of surface of the humerus. Here, somewhere here. So obviously, if a muscle is running on the medial side of the humerus, so that is lateral wall of the axilla. The coracobrachialis is on the medial side of the humerus. So obviously, it is on the lateral side of the axilla here. So if I draw this here, the tendon here will be the long head of vices brachii in the bicipital groove. And as we said, we also will see the coracobrachialis muscle will be not the tendon, the coracobrachialis muscle will be seen running in there. So in the lateral wall, in the lateral wall here, if I write all the contents at one place, we got bicipital groove. We got bicipital groove number one. What is there in the bicipital groove guys? We got this long head, long head of biceps brachii, I am writing BB, long head of biceps brachii is there and of course coracobrachialis muscle. and the coracobrachialis muscle as well and they are all forming the lateral wall. Lateral wall is, is 
relatively narrow if you compare it with the anterior wall, medial wall or posterior wall. And we have the bicepital groove there, the long head of biceps and the coracobrachialis. Floor, we said nothing to worry about the floor. Floor is basically, is just by the skin and the fascia. And the apex of the axilla is truncated. It's like a truncated cone, which is giving passage to the structures to come from the neck region into axilla. We have a cervical axillary canal there, cervical axillary canal, which is allowing the structures to come inside. Like, what structures are coming inside in there? The, the structures which are forming the content of the axilla will be in there somewhere. Obviously, we have a lot of fat in there. Fat is one of the content. Apart from the fat, what you will see, you will see the axillary sheath inside. Axillary sheath, which is enclosing the axillary artery, axillary vein, and we also have the cords of brachial plexus present around it. So, when you talk about the contents, broadly, if you look at the contents of the axilla, which will be here in there, is in the sheath called as axillary sheath. Well, we have in the axillary sheath, we got axillary artery. Let's say this is axillary artery here. Axillary vein is always on the medial side of the artery. That's a axillary vein which is on the medial side of the artery throughout its axillary artery course. And then we have cords of brachial plexus. Like we have a lateral cord of brachial plexus on toward the lateral side here. We have a medial cord of brachial plexus somewhere here. And posteriorly, we have a posterior cord of brachial plexus. So these are the contents of the axilla. Let me just pen down these contents at <coughs> one place. So contents goes like number one is what that is obviously what sheath axillary sheath is there and to remind you guys axillary sheath is a continuation of a fascia from the neck which fascia axillary sheath was a continuation of pre vertebral fascia axillary sheath is the continuation of pre vertebral fascia from the neck pre vertebral fascia it's a part of deep cervical fascia only so it is a continuation of the pre vertebral fascia from the neck what we have in axillary sheath, we obviously we got the axillary vessels, artery and vein, both are there. As I told you, remember vein is medial to the artery throughout its course. And then we have the cords of the brachial plexus. Cords of brachial plexus will be there. Yes, apart from that, what other contents will be there? The fat obviously is there in the axilla. And apart from that, we'll also be having axillary lymph nodes present not drawing in there just it's quite obvious that these must be the contents of the axilla we got an axillary sheath we got contents in the axillary sheath is axillary vessels the cords of the brachial plexus and of course in the axilla the content has to be the fat and the axillary lymph nodes are also in there so that is about the contents of the the axilla <clears throat> out of which axillary artery we have discussed in the blood vessel part already you already have discussed that and the other major content that is the the brachial plexus We'll be discussing in the next segment.